Hey, what's up guys? Good morning and welcome back to another video. Where's my dang page thingy? Okay. Alright. I haven't had a video in a few days because uh freaking since I've been doing this, uh the devil has been also been attacking me as well, but I've had a really good talk with my brother. And, uh, it helped set me straight. You know what I mean? You know, um, this is, this is the devil's game to get you, you know, when, when you're trying to talk of salvation, it's his game to make so much people feel like I do, to feel unqualified by their sin, by their shame, by what people, other people will think about you, you know what I mean? What you think about yourself. He tries to just use everything and shame and keep you from talking about the salvation of Christ. And and my brother helped me realize that. <clears throat> so yeah. So I'm not gonna stay down. I'm gonna come back. I'm I'm back. I'm gonna we're gonna read this and. Uh, grow in our relationship with Christ and hopefully help you guys and other people grow in their relationship with Christ and we're not going to give up and stay down. Thank you so much brother Anthony you are you are awesome thank you I appreciate you and I thank God so much for bringing you in my life for your wisdom and your great you have really good interpretation and that helps me a lot. Alright, so we were on um, chapter 6, <clears throat> Wickedness in the World. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God. So, what I gotta realize now, sorry, is that the devil's not gonna stop fighting me to stop this. Either temptation is going to come in the form of lust, some type of way. Temp temptation is going to come, and I gotta. And having this insight uh, gives me, should give me an advantage for that fight, so I can stay on task. So I need to realize that and put that in my brain now, so that when I see that temptation, because I know what it is when it comes. When it comes, I know. I was like, I'm like, I'm like, ah. I know what this is, but I need not give in to it. Alright, so I just had to say that. And also saying this because most people don't, and they don't, and churches don't. So other people don't realize that, and when they come into this, they, this fight or this shame, they just stop. You know what I mean? So. We just need to keep doing. We need to keep doing it, no matter what. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you so much. When humans began to increase in number on, on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, "My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be." A hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. I'm going to have to read this like a few times. That's what it takes me. Even videos, I have to watch things like over and over a few times to really get it in my brain. I suck. <laughs> at like keeping things in and interpreting it <laughs> the Lord God or the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of, of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time Dang. the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled 
So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah and the Flood. I was actually watching this movie, Noah, the other day. <clears throat> with Russell Crowe. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. I thought it was... Like the Noah movie, I thought it was... I don't know, and there were some parts where I was like, is that in the Bible? Or like, and then they made the Nephilim look like... Rocks, like they're... I think that's what they were, the Nephilim. They are like huge rock creatures or something, like the Korgs from Thor. It was weird. Um, I don't know. But there were some things in there I was like, I don't remember ever hearing that. And then Cain, I thought Cain had, was washed away in the waters, but like in a movie, he found his way onto the boat and like, and stuff. So I don't know, we'll see if that happened, but yeah. I don't remember ever hearing about that happened. And if so, I was like, dang, that sucks. I mean, I was, like, hoping it would stay true. But maybe it is. And maybe I am uneducated. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end. I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence. Because of them, I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rims in it <coughs> and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Imagine being Noah and you're getting this, and it's like, it feels so impossible or whatever. And you're just like, dang, how am I going to build? this. And he, and he built it like a G. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper de decks. <clears throat> I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark. You and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and stored away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Yeah, and that and the, and in that movie, Noah freaking when Cain got onto the boat or whatever, he grabs one of the animals and eats it. And I was like, wait, what? Like, there's only two of each. You're grabbing one of those. So now there's only one or something. I know that did not, that didn't happen, or whatever. That movie was like, I don't know. They probably added it in there for like plot, which is weird, or like extra, like an extra end scene or something, an extra end scene fight, or I don't know, it just doesn't make sense, unless it happened, but I just don't remember ever hearing about that. The Lord then said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. 
Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female. Oh, seven pairs? Seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate. So, oh, I didn't know that. You got seven pairs of each animal. Not just one. I thought it was just one, like one male, one female of that animal, and then one male, one female of a different animal, but seven pairs of each. I didn't know that. <clears throat> also, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now I will send rain on earth for 40 days and 40 nights. It's only seven, huh? I just know it's like seven pairs and then seven days. Seven. March around. Didn't God have people march around uh, somewhere? Israel. Not Israel. Some place. For like seven days. I don't know. We'll get there, though. <laughs> then I'll be able to freaking talk about it at all. I won't know stuff based on the Bible from what I hear in church or from videos. I'll know it from, uh, from actually reading it. So that'll be cool. Seven days from now, I will send the rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the earth. I'll wipe, I'll wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark. Didn't God say, like, only clean animals? I guess he didn't really say. He said, take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal. Maybe that's why we have pigs nowadays. I wonder if... No. Pairs of unclean animals of birds and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. As God has commanded. So there you go, it says it right there. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. In the 600th year, dang, 600 freaking years old. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth in the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. The floodgates of heavens. On that very day, Noah and his sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds. So here, yeah, it's saying like they all had wives in, mm -hmm. in that movie. I think it was like Ham or whatever who didn't have a girl or something and he was all mad and Noah was like created like some weird conflict between them or something. Stuff. So I don't know, I don't think that movie had it right. I trust the Bible more, <laughs> obviously. Took together with his wife and the wives of his three sons. So right here, yeah, it says it. Enter the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind. Everything with wings, pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in for forty days 
The flood kept coming on the earth as the waters increased. They lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. That's insane. That's some deep water. That would be scary. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swam over the earth, and all mankind. And we thought oceans were deep. Imagine that. Freak. So, what about the sharks? Yeah. Did they die too? And like, things that could swim? Well, yeah, it's not fresh water. I mean, it's not salt water. So those things probably not, but what about like gators and like other stuff? I wonder if like... Obviously it was okay, you don't have to bring them in the ark, because there's water anyway. <coughs> Imagine being like a human out there, and like you didn't die from the flood, and you're like sitting at the top, top, like, of the water, and it's all like really freaking high, like above the mountains, 15 cubits, like deep as crap, imagine how scary that would be, you're just like, <gasps> freaking, and then a shark that's left freaking eats you or something, that would suck. <laughs> Alright, sorry, I don't know, I think about some weird stuff. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in it, in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only, only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth. The waters recite, recite, recited or receded. Now the springs of the deep and the, and the floodgates of the heavens had been, been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of the hundred and fifty days the water had gone down. And on the seventh day of the seventh month, seven, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Aratat, or Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. And he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground, but the dove could... But the dove could find nowhere to perch because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So he returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the first month, Noah's six hundred and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then re removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the twenty-seventh day on the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply in the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wives and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds. Everything that moves on land came out of the ark one kind after another. <clears throat> then Noah built an altar to the Lord, taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds. He sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled p 
pleasing aroma and said in its heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. That's crazy. It's true, though. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As, as long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Chapter 9, God's Covenant with Noah. <laughs> then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall on all of the beasts of the earth, and on all of the birds in the sky, on every creature that moves along the ground, and all the fish in the sea. They are given to you, into your hands. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. So if you ever get harassed by somebody saying, you can't eat meat, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Tell them this. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Everything that lives and moves about will be fruit for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. What does that mean? Like, you can't eat it alive? Like, just, what does that mean? If anyone can interpret that better than me and tell me what that means, can you leave a comment down below? But you must, but you must not eat meat that has its life blood still in it. I mean, like, like gutting it, letting all the blood come out. That makes sense. Or eating it alive, eating it life. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I'll demand an accounting from every animal. And from each human being, too, I will demand an accounting for the life of another human being. Whoever sheds human blood by humans, shall their blood be shed. Oh, dang. For the image of God has God made mankind. So if somebody had killed somebody, they're going to be killed by another human? Makes sense. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals. All those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, "There, that this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you, every living creature, with you a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. And then, now they're trying to distort the whole meaning of a rainbow. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. It, should, it just rained. It literally just rained. There's probably a a rainbow out there right now. I'm gonna go look at it real quick. I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna go see that. That's how you realize. Look at it and be like, that's the cup. Okay, I can't find one, but it's all super wet out there, and now my socks are all wet, so. <laughs> but yeah. Made me remember this one thing. It was like, it goes like, reading rainbow. It's something that's like instilled in my head. On It's like some from some show. When I was a kid, and I'm going to look it up so I can, like, remember it. Um, I'm going to 
God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant I have established between you and all life on earth. The sons of Noah. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the whole earth. Mm-hmm. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Wah. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they, they would not see their father naked. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves. Will he be to his brothers? He also said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Japheth. Why? After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Noah lived a total of 950 years, and then he died. Why would he get mad that Canaan... Oh, but Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Oh, I thought it was Canaan that covered... Moses for some reason. But maybe Canaan was like... I'm gonna read this up. He became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked. I told his two brothers outside. Sham and Japheth took a garment and laid it across the shoulders and they walked backward and covered their father's naked body. I don't know if I'm not reading it right. But why did he get mad at Canaan? Because he went out there and told the two brothers that his father was naked? Oh, yeah, I guess I could have. He could have just left it. I don't know. Uh, he also said, Praise be to the Lord God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. And then it says, He lived 350 years after the flood, and he lived a total of 950 years. So um, right now we're at. Chapter 10, the Table of Nations. We'll stop there. We, we'll read another three chapters again tomorrow. Or more. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop it there. Hope you guys enjoy this little reading. I'm not going to let freaking the devil holding me down in this stupid crap. I'm glad I have a brother that set me straight. Thank you so much. And if anyone wants to give their life to Jesus and have a relationship with Christ, we can uh, make a prayer for you. And for me. Yeah, we can repent of our sins and give our lives to God. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for me, and I know you rose again. Thank you. I hail you as Lord. I give you my life. Use me to bring about your purpose. And to bring more people closer to you. In Jesus' name, thank you. And amen. It's also, it's so hard to think, trying to think of a prayer, like, right off the bat. But, uh, I hope I did good. I hope I, I, I really mean it. 
uh, you guys get a relationship with him and seek after him and don't let we're all sinners you're gonna fall short I'm gonna fall short but don't stay short get back up keep keep fighting and keep teaching people of the salvation of God and Jesus and keep knocking keep throwing some hands back at that devil alright guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll see you tomorrow and God bless.